Come on, debug. Let's find it. Our secret weapon. Dreams, the latest game from the wonderfully creative Media Molecule, is finally out after a near year-long early access period and a development timeline that has spanned most of the console generation. First shown off seven years ago today, actually, at the PlayStation 4 reveal event, Dreams was discussed nebulously and without a title. They described it as work-in-progress tools that would allow players to easily bring their dreams to life whatever that meant. Over the subsequent years, Dreams would appear here and there, showing off more creations, providing interludes for Sony's E3 show one year, and continued to be hard to grasp. What was it, exactly? How could all these things we are seeing be made with a controller and a PS4? Would it be easy? And would people even care enough to create? Well, Dreams is here, and all those questions will be answered. There are two halves to Dreams, play and creation. The play half of it is rather simple, really. You are presented with numerous ways to discover things made by the community. When you find something that catches your eye, you simply click on it and off you go, experiencing whatever strange, wondrous creation someone has put out into the world. We'll come back to the playing half of Dreams in a bit. The other half of Dreams is the complicated half, the creation engine, I suppose we can call it. To put it simply, the creation half of Dreams is essentially a fully-fledged game engine and more. With the tools Media Molecule has released, anyone can theoretically make just about anything they want. Do you want to make a movie? Do you want to make games? Do you want to make music or models or sound effects or user interface elements or paintings? The list goes on and on and all of it can be made in Dreams. Dreams' creation engine is basically Unity or Unreal Engine, but made more accessible and friendly. Accessibility and friendliness are really the core to the success of the creation tools. When you first launch the game before you can create anything at all, you are eased into the very basics via the first of many, many tutorials. The cheery voice introduces you to the home space, your customizable main menu of sorts, and teaches you how to move, interact with objects, grab, duplicate, and so on. Then you're introduced to maybe the most important part of Dreams' creation tools, the ability to search for and then place other creations inside your own. Think of it as a marketplace of sorts for assets, models, sounds, effects, and so on. Except, of course, you aren't paying for them. These are things that have been made by others and are freely usable in any way you like. Do you want a tree in your home space? Yes, okay, good. What type of tree would you like? Well, you have quite a few to choose from, as you can see. For me, this is the part of Dreams' tools that makes it most accessible. Being able to rely on the wonderful talent of others so that I can slap together some goofy thing quickly and easily is brilliant. Now, Dreams is certainly not just a collection of assets you can stamp into a blank space. Like I said earlier, you can create just about anything you want. There are elaborate, remarkably capable sculpting tools for people to create any model they can think of. There is a music and sound creation toolset that I hardly even understand. You can do keyframe animation, create logic processes, it goes on. Honestly, the creation aspects of Dreams are so vast and capable with so much to learn that I can hardly wrap my head around all of it. Thankfully, there are an enormous number of interactive tutorials to help. These tutorials will walk you through just about every single aspect of creation. Each is broken down into numerous smaller steps where a clear and pleasantly narrated video plays in the corner of the screen while you follow along simultaneously in the game. I went through quite a lot of these tutorials during the early access period for the game over the last eight or 10 months, and they were great then, they've only been improved and expanded upon for the full release. And they are effective. With no real knowledge going in, I was able to follow the tutorials and get my head around how to create something in Dreams. Aspects that didn't interest me like programming, I was able to ignore. Aspects that did interest me, like lighting and atmosphere, I could focus on and deep dive into. You start with very basic tutorials, and then they increase in complexity to advanced and eventually masterclass tier tutorials. Like I said, there are an enormous number of them, for better and for worse. There are times where I wish the tutorials moved a little faster, but having a tutorial move too quickly is infuriating, so I can't hold it against them. There is also a near overwhelming number of tutorials. When I first buttoned through into the tutorials list the other day, upon seeing the seemingly endless list of them that I hadn't completed, 
I felt a bit scared and turned off. But I shouldn't be scared or turned off. That's one of the core ideas of dreams. Don't be scared of learning, and then don't be scared of creating. And I'm happy to say that I have been able to learn and create with dreams. After going through quite a few tutorials and getting a good grip on the very basics of what is possible, I was able to create something weird that came out of my head and is distinctly mine. Sure, it maybe took like 30 or 40 hours to do something very basic, but what I was able to create on my first outing is more than I've ever managed with any other elaborate creation tool set. I've dabbled in Unreal Engine and Unity and they are overwhelming, yes, but worse than that, they are boring. The UI of the programs, the blank empty space when launching it, the hundreds of icons across the top of the screen, and the endless YouTube tutorials are all boring. Dreams is brilliant at making the mundane aspects of a tool pop with personality. The simple act of replacing a mouse cursor with a goofy little creature goes a long way in making the whole experience feel less like a tool and more like a playset. Sure, the deeper you dig into it all, the more mundane the tools become, but the surface level friendliness of the UI and menus makes it so much more inviting to just start making something. I should also mention that it seems that the creation tools will be expanded upon in the future through updates. The two biggest ones that we know are indeed coming are online multiplayer support and VR capabilities, both of which are full of incredible potential. I should stop talking about the creation aspects of Dreams because it's something that I've only barely managed to get a hold on and it's not what I've spent most of my time doing with the game. Suffice it to say though, it works. Using just a PS4 remote, I can't speak to how the move controllers are, I've been able to create things and I intend to create more things in the future. It may take me a long, long time to do it, but I'll bumble my way through to an end vision of something that once lived in my head and that is a huge success on Media Molecule's behalf. It's what I presume has taken them so long to get the game out the door. Honing the creation tools over all these years so that idiots like me can get comfortable enough to make something with them must have been a monumental effort. But here we are. Dreams' creation engine is about as far from the simplicity of something like Mario Maker as you can imagine, yet still, Media Molecule was able to make a toolset that works. I won't say that it's exactly easy to make something in Dreams, but it's easier to make something in Dreams than any game creation toolset I've ever tried. It's also friendly, it's pleasant, it's accessible, it's unbelievably capable, and it's only $40. When you finish creating whatever it is that you have created, you are able to release it online for others to see and potentially even use too. You can opt to have something you've made be remixable, which is to say that you're allowing others to use your creation in their creations. The game also has a very smart breadcrumb trail that credits creators properly. So if I use 15 different creations to make my dream from 15 different creators, then all 15 of those creators and what they made is visibly tied to my creation. It's a very smart and necessary system that ensures everyone gets credited. Now that your creation has been unleashed upon the world, why not take a break from all that making and instead play some stuff others have made? For me, this is where the real pleasure of dreams is. What the game calls dream surfing, you can play or look at or engage with anything and everything that has been released into the world of dreams. To start, you are introduced to what dreams is capable of thanks to a brief but remarkable campaign made entirely in dreams by Media Molecule. Art's Dream, as it's called, is a two or so hour long journey focused on a man going through a rough time and diving back into the comfort of his dream worlds. The campaign is remarkable for two reasons. The first is that it is a positively stunning example of just how much can be done with dreams. There are point and click adventure segments, 3D platformer sections with some of my absolute favorite art in ages by the way, alongside cutscenes and even musical numbers. It's tremendous stuff all around. Art's Dream is wonderful to play because it's the first time in Dreams we have a fully completed and realized game. Up until now, during the early access period, most of the creations in Dreams were very much work in progress. And that's fine. In fact, it's wonderful. And there are many great completed experiences in the form of cinematic short stories or dioramas or paintings, etc. But Art's Dream offers a look at the end point many of these dreams will eventually, hopefully, get to. Ideally, to me, the best dreams creations will be the ones that feel like I should have paid for them as a standalone indie title. Art's Dream feels like one of those to me. If you told me it was a two hour, $10 experience sold on the PlayStation Store, I'd believe it. 
The other remarkable thing about it is that it's a story with a very appropriate and touching message that fits the themes of dreams perfectly. It's a story about a depressed man who isn't confident with being himself and expressing his creativity. It's about the very core of dreams' existence. It's about untangling your own damn brain and getting out of your own head, and then being creative and putting those creations out into the world. It's Meaty Molecule telling the players to go for it, not to be afraid. And that's just wonderful. It's a heartwarming, incredibly effective kick in the pants to all that play dreams. Okay, so we've seen what Dreams is capable of in the hands of the developers themselves, and it's very impressive. But what about the most important part? The creations of us, of you. For me, seeing the things people make in Dreams, experiencing them, is the truly special part of Dreams. In the week that it's been since the game released to everyone or in the nine months of early access, the creations astound me. The tools for discovering creations are excellent, offering up tons of different sorting options, from curated lists by Media Molecule to generated recommendations based on your browsing history to viewing what your friends have liked. There is no shortage of ways to discover new creations. And every single time I boot the game up and go dream surfing, almost everything I see is new. It's in this half of the game that dreams becomes powerful and rather profound. While writing this, I was struck with a bit of a conundrum. How do I review a game that is mostly about playing things other people have made on their PS4. I'm not entirely sure. No one person is going to experience the same dreams as I have, and a great many of the dreams I've played are... they're kind of a little bit bad. So I can't judge the dreams individually, and I can't really talk about them in terms of graphics or playability. What I can do, though, is tell you how playing dreams makes me feel, because the ways dreams has made me feel over the last several months is unlike just about anything I've ever played. The best creations in dreams astound and confuse me. There is nothing like launching a dream and being completely baffled as to how it was even created in the first place. How did they make this with these tools? It's like magic to me. How are these kaleidoscopic visualizers made? How did this person make a programming game? How did this person model and light this to make it look so real? Did one person really make all of this themselves? Really? It's extraordinary to see the quality of creations that are already being born out of dreams. The things people have made can be hilarious too, both genuinely and ironically. I've gotten better honest laughs from dreams than most any other entertainment in the past year. The game is a great outlet for comedy of all sorts. Things can also be terrifying. There's something especially scary to me about going into a dream and not having a single idea of what it might be. There is no safety net when it comes to horror in dreams in that I have no idea who is making it and no expectations. I think dreams will provide some genuinely amazing horror experiences because of this. There are also so many dreams that are just extremely weird. I think a lot of people won't know what exactly to do with some of the surrealist oddities that are already being made in dreams. The brand of weirdness is so far out there from what you might expect to see on a PS4, but that's incredible. I love that I can go to dreams to have an itch scratched when most other media lets me down. I adore strangeness and dreams is a wellspring of strangeness. The specific brands of weirdness that some creators are capable of is oddly reassuring to me too in that I feel some connection and comfort with the knowledge that there are indeed lots of people out there with exceptionally weird imaginations. There's something very remarkable about experiencing something that feels specifically made for you and your brain. And I I think dreams will offer that to just about everyone, no matter what it is your brain wants. But like I said a few minutes ago, a lot of the things made in dreams are also kind of bad. But by bad, I mean when judged against the best of the best. And I also don't mean bad as a derogatory. Bad is probably the wrong word, in fact, because within these humble little creations is the most unique of sensations. When I see something strange and cobbled together and somewhat poorly presented, I feel awe? I think it's awe. It's a different form of awe from that of looking at the greatest of what's been made in dreams. It's the awe of seeing something that I know was made because someone out there in the world had it in their head and they needed to pull it out of their brain. Nothing I've ever played or watched or read has ever made me feel this way. Yes, everything I've ever played or watched or read is of course made by people expressing some amount of creativity, 
but the immediacy of Dreams' creations affects me like nothing else. It's an incredibly powerful thing to be able to, essentially, look into some unknown person's mind and get a tiny glimpse of what their imagination can conjure. That, of course, was the ultimate goal of Dreams to allow anyone and everyone to put their dreams out into the world. It's the goal Media Molecule set out with achieving all those years ago, to build a toolset that allows anyone with a PS4 to express themselves, and for those expressions to be seen by others, even if it's just by one other person. It took years, nearly the entire console generation in fact, but Media Molecule achieved these goals and Dreams has been unleashed upon the world, and it's rather miraculous. So please, Go and buy dreams. Experience the wonderful, weird things other people have made. Then, take a chance, spend some time, make something yourself, and put it out into the world. You won't regret it. <laughs>